Hello dearies, and welcome to Cooking with Esmeralda. I'm Esmeralda, your host, and when I tell you that you can make dinner appear like magic, you know I'm not just blowing smoke. Esmeralda would never lie to you. Today we'll be looking at some goodies you can take to the next meeting of your coven. I've whipped up an absolutely spellbinding bread that rises all by itself. A very special black cat furball souffle and a tangy spiderweb dip I know you'll want to try. But first Esmeralda thought she'd like to answer some of the viewer mail. I get so many fascinating letters from all of you. Judy from Spokane wants to know if it's alright if she uses powdered bat's wing in her potions. Yes, it's perfectly alright to use the powder, Judy, but I suggest you double the amount mentioned in the recipe. You know what Esmeralda says, fresh ingredients are best, and you can never have too much bat's wing. And Vicki from Knoxville asks, asks if it's alright to use this new product that's out on the market, Imitation Eye of Newt. I'm sorry, Vicki, I can't recommend it. Eye of Newt is an essential ingredient, and if you substitute an imitation for the real thing, I think you'll find your potions falling flat. Take the Love Potion. Eye of Newt is what gives it its kick. Leave it out or put something else in and you're asking for trouble. Someone comes in, asks for a Love Potion, and they'll wind up with jealousy or flatulence. And believe me, dearies, they'll sue. By the way, that reminds me. I just learned this lovely new spell that turns lawyers into June bugs. It's so handy, but that's for another show. Now I know I have new can be hard to find, so I want all of you to grab a pencil and paper and write down this address. Cooper's Newt Farm, Springboro, Massachusetts. You order by the newt, not by the eye. Mrs. Cooper assures me that she's got a goodly supply of fresh newts to meet your needs. Oh, and I'd like to say hello to Mrs. Cooper today. It's her birthday. She's 146 years young. Hi, honey. Happy Hocus Pocus. Now, as you know, there's no good cooking without a little advice thrown into the pot. So here, here's Esmeralda's pinch of wisdom for the week. I know that many of you are faced with the problem of turning men into animals. Well, Esmeralda is an old-fashioned gal when it comes to that. All men are beasts, you see, at heart, and I always let them take the lead. For example, if a man asks like a swine, well, then I turn him into a pig. Or if he behaves like a jackass, you can be sure he'll wake up a donkey. And naturally, you encourage the, uh, you encounter the occasional toad or snake, or Lord help us, a weasel which is always amusing. But the point I'm trying to make is that I urge you to let the man declare himself first, and then you cast your spell. They seem to take much better that way. At least that's my experience. Okay, at this point in our show, I'd like to mention our wonderful sponsor, Caldwell Cauldrons. No matter what you intend to boil or brew, Caldwell is the cauldron for you. People ask me, Esmeralda, what do you think of walks? Or, Esmeralda, do you use a microwave? And the answer is that I do make use of all the modern conveniences. But when the time comes to cook up a real first-class batch of magic potion dearies, there's nothing like the good old cauldron. And when it comes to cauldrons, I've never found a better one than Caldwell. So remember, when it's time for trick-or-treat, a Caldwell cauldron can't be beat. Wonderful. All right, I think it's time for a short break, but when we come back, Esmeralda is going to show you all how to turn those awful, shouting, screaming neighborhood brats into tasty gingerbread. I'll be right back. 